I want to spend some time with you right now and walk you through a tutorial on how you build a TPZ, which is a tree protection zone. So a short video on how you design it, looking at the requirements from the city of Toronto and match that against any large trees or city owned trees that are on your project site, whether that's interior renovation or exterior renovation, walking you through how to look at the requirements and then more importantly, how to design that TBZ on the site plan so that you can share that with your colleagues on site and they can build it according to your requirements. Okay, so here's a case study I wanna show you to explain what we're looking at. This is a renovation that uh, we completed a few years ago in the Kingsway. It was a second story addition to um, this house in the center and you know, large scope of work. So rear second story addition, rear second story, or sorry, middle second story addition. And we have this large tree, you know, in the center of the front yard, and we have a secondary tree in, in the front. Um, and these try to trigger a, a tree protection zone as required by Toronto's urban forestry. So here's the scope afterwards. So you can certainly see, you know, large addition to the second floor. Um, driveway still looks good. Trees look still healthy. Um, and all that is in place because we did build a tree protection zone as required by the state of Toronto. So let's look, look at how we do that. And let's start with sort of why we do that. So here's the reason why. Trees effectively, a lot of their feeder roots are right by the surface. They do poorly in compacted soil. And when you place bins or construction materials around trees, they significantly harm the health of that tree. So the best thing to do is follow the city's requirements, um, avoid getting a fine for urban forestry, build a tree protection zone around that tree, and then it allows you to understand and communicate to your crew and your subtrades where they can and cannot place construction materials and compact that soil around trees. So this is a no-no. And this is more what we're looking for. So you can see similar tree, similar scope, or sort of size of tree. You know, the TPZ is clearly marked with signage, these you know, two white City of Toronto signs explaining what it is. It's built to be 1.2 meters tall or four feet tall just a two by four and then stretched in orange snow fencing. So not that difficult. And what we'll look at today is how we look at a site plan as a case study, look at the city requirements and then draw that to satisfy. So here's the site plan of this house, the Kingsway we just looked at. It has, let's see, one, two. So it has a tree in the back, tree number four, tree number five, and it has three in the front, tree number one, tree number two, and tree number three. Now these trees are not marked as far as the size, and this is what demonstrates, or sorry, dictates how large the tree protection zone will have to be. So if your site plan doesn't have the, it's called DBH, so the diameter at breast height, which means, you know, about 1.2 meters off the ground, around four feet, uh, around breast height, around that tree, that's the DBH, the diameter at breast height. So they're not marked on the plan here. So what we had as a supplement was we had an arborist give us this report, which identifies these five trees, one, two, three, four, five. So we have a, uh, a white oak at 80 centimeters uh, DBH, diameter at breast height. Uh, we had a white spruce, 23 centimeters, white oak, 82, a honey locust, 31, and a Colorado blue, blue spruce at 31. The condition is marked and they indicate whether it's a city managed tree or it is a private tree. Okay, and those have different requirements. So the arborist here has already done us the, the favor of dictating how large the TBZ must be. So let's actually learn how they did that. So if we go back to the photos and understand what we're talking about, we have this large tree in the front, we have the smaller sort of spruce at the front corner, and we have two at the rear. So looking at our sizes here, we can see that um, on our property, we have tree number two up in the front corner and tree number three in the middle. So let's figure out, just write their sizes down. So tree number two is 23 centimeters and tree number three is 82. So I'm just gonna get my text tool out, um, just convert that to red text, just so I can understand what it is. So we have 23 centimeters for tree number two and I'm just gonna move that up so I remember what it is. And I had 82 for this tree number two. Sorry, tree number three. And then in the back, we 
Whoops. Okay, here we go. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so both tree four and five, they were 31 centimeters. So I'll just make that mark so I can remember what that is. Okay, so now to determine what we need, we need to go to the City of Toronto website. You can, I'll just pull up another browser here. And I simply search City of Toronto Tree Production Zone, click on the City of Toronto website, scroll down to Tree Production Zone, expand that, and then open the PDF Tree Production Policy and Specifications for Construction Near Trees, which is what we're planning on doing. So we have an 18 page document, kind of visualizes what we require for a TPZ. So we can either have, you know, four by eight standing sheets of plywood that are built around a framed wall. We can either have a, a two by four framed wall built to four feet tall that's stretched in snow fencing, you know, that orange protective barrier or a combination of the two. And we need these erected TPZ signs. So let's go to uh, the size of a, of a TPZ. So we'll skip through this information and certainly you can read this to understand it. So down on page six, we have our requirements. So you can see for a DBH, so trunk diameter at breast height is less than 10 centimeters. We only need a 1.2 meter protection area around each side of the tree. So we have trees that are um, 23 centimeters in the front. So one of those is 1.8. So I'm just going to go to my tree protection zone and just right below this that I'm looking for a 1.8 meter TPZ, just so I can remember that note. And I can go back to my map. So my second tree was 82 centimeters in the front, so tree number three, and it is 5.4 meters in each direction. So I can go back to my, my map and I'll make that just that note here. So 5.4 meters is my TPZ. And that goes in all directions from, from the trunk. So if we zoom in here, look at some of these dimensions. So if I need to be 5.4 meters in each direction from this trunk on all four, in all four sides around, you know, that circumference, then I'm looking at 10.8 meters from side to side. If I had it go the, the full side of both, uh, both sides of the tree, it looks like my lot width up here is only 9.29 meters. In depth. So what I'm going to do is my TPZ for this big tree is going to be right from the front, right to the back. Now the smaller one is going to be 1.8 meters in each direction, or let's call it 3.6 meters, right? From side to side, um, across my circle. Now, rather than build, you know, if I wanted to build the bare minimum, what I could do is I turn on my line tool. I like to use orange for TPZs. And I like to use a dashed line is, you know, my minimum requirement right now is to draw my TBZ for this tree that comes down here. And if I copy and paste, you know, its TBZ will come all the way down. And because I'm 5.4 meters, you know, all four sides, I do need it across the driveway as well. So I'm going to place that there. And I'm also going to put it up here in the corner to make this corner. Okay, so I really need that to happen and I need to close in this other side. So that goes kind of up the top. So that's kind of the minimum I need for this tree, just roughly scaling it from my site plan. I can then dimension it, you know, show that I do need to be 10.8 meters across. Um, and then my smaller tree would have a TBZ that, you know, is a much smaller configuration up here. So it's going to be closer to this size once I actually scale it on the drawing. And I can do that in you know, a number of tools. Um, so if I just control and paste these additional elements, I can see that you know I kind of have a funny shape here. Let's just move this out of the way. Oops, let's get the red box here. All right, there we go. So now we can see my two trees. Of course, we could do this if we wanted to. There's a lot of framing here that's not necessary. This section through the middle is not required. This is kind of a funny shape and takes more, you know, more time to build. So the thing that I'm probably going to do is not build a separate one around the small tree is just say, you know, for the uh, efficiency of material and time, let's just build a TBZ across the whole front yard. You know, you are permitted to build one that's larger than what you required. And this is simpler to build, simpler to dimension. It is simply 9.2 meters deep 
and is the full width of the front of the lot, uh, which is 13.72 is what it looks like I am. So that's kind of what I would do for this tree, uh, TBZ at the front. You know, then I can indicate on the side, you know, how I'm looking at building this. I could simply use some orange type and move this up to the top. So I could say front TPZ is going to be four feet tall, two by four framed with fence. Okay, and then I want to dimension, um, maybe I want to change the alignment here for my text, just so it's easier to read. I go less justified, and I can change that font color to orange, maybe so it's related, and maybe even bold it. Okay, so now that kind of stands out on my plan. It's a bit easier to read. Um, and then I want to move forward and do that for my rear trees as well. So I'd simply go back to the City of Toronto site, look to see whether a 31 centimeter tree on a private yard requires a TBZ, look at that DBH, look in the chart to see how far that TBZ would project into the rear yard in this case, and I'd be able to draw that in the back. So let's say we went back and we arbitrarily figured out the dimension. Look at the back of this lot, because it tucks into you know fence line at the rear, I'm not required to build a TBZ that you know operates as a box. So I don't have to protect the rear um, because there's already a fence there. So what I can do is I can just draw line here at the distance I'm required to for the TPZ away from that trunk and because I have fencing on all four sides and the garage blocks my entrance it's not really a, a way for me to put material back there and compact that soil and injure that tree so I can get away with just doing a TPZ in the front of those trees now just pulling back here to kind of summarize you know look at the DBH of those trees you know the diameter of that trunk at breast height go to the city website pull the PDF for TPZ dimensions, look at those minimum requirements, and you'll simply want to build and dimension a TPZ that is the you know, minimum required size. Now, one thing to note down here, let's imagine a scenario where this tree at the front actually has, um, let's just change this here for a second to green so we can get a better indication here. We'll put a single line on it. Let's imagine here that my tree in the front actually hangs over the driveway. So it's, it's TBZ, you know, effectively would have to be a little bit larger here. Now, because the, the canopy is extending over hardscaping that's already impacted that tree, you're not required to protect hardscaping like a driveway with a tree protection zone. Okay, the, T, the TBZ can stop at the extent of any softscaping. So, planting, grasses, gardens, etc. Anywhere where you can really compact that soil and injure that tree. In the case of any overhang on the driveway, you know, we're not required to have our you know, arched uh, fence. You can simply just draw a straight line across that fence. Now in a case of a tree actually extending over the driveway, um, if you're working on this neighboring house down here, you'd have to build a TBZ just to protect where that minimum overhang does impact that softscaping. So for our example, you know, the tree canopy and our minimum dimension ends at the driveway, so that's where we've drawn this line. So this is a consideration you can think about. So that's effectively how we draw a tree protection zone, the correct size. I would then go in just to finish this, this drawing and add dimensions for my length, my width, and any of these little sections here. That allows my crew later to take uh, linear to make takeoffs and dimensions or the right materials and then build it to the correct height. That's it. Thanks.